everyone, Squirrel Bait here, and it's been a while, one, since I've made a video, and two, since we have talked, ooh, survival and preparedness. It has been a while. So, this is what I want to talk about. I was watching this series, The Walking Dead, again, and I noticed something in the show. Among all of the unrealistic things in that show, there was one thing that was very, very realistic that we in the prepping community don't like to talk about. And so we are. I've talked about this in the past, but I think it's time to talk about it again. We are very, very serious about our gear. We are very attached to our gear. We spend an awful lot of time dialing in our gear, making sure that our packs are, you know, as lightweight as we can. We have everything that we need. We have everything that meets our needs and so on and so forth. And we spend an incredible amount of time dealing with our bags and we are very attached to our things. And I am definitely the same. But there's reality that I noticed in The Walking Dead. And that is people start off with their packs and for a wide variety of reasons don't have them anymore. And if things went wrong enough, if SHTF happened to that level that they were dealing with, I think that's very, very realistic. You can't jump with your pack on. You might with a get me home bag, but with a full bug out bag, I don't think you're jumping. At least I can't. You're not going to be able to run like you may need to. You may have to drop your pack in order to run. For example, if there is an EMP and planes are falling out of the sky, they are starting fires. How fast can you run with your pack and how fast can you run without your pack? If you can run just as fast with your pack, kudos to you because I can't. So we have to make sure that we look at the items in our bags and say, what would I do if I didn't have this item? How can I use my environment to compensate for the fact they don't have this item anymore? For example, sleeping bag. It saves you an incredible amount of time to just pull out your sleeping bag and get in it versus have to create something for yourself. Same thing with your tent or your tarp or whatever it is you're using for shelter. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of energy. You don't have to make something. But you could if you had to, right? Given the environment you plan on being in, various times a year, you need to consider various times a year. Can you get by without that item? If not, you, you have some learning to do. You have some bushcrafting you need to learn. Because you have to be able to survive without some of the bigger items in your pack. Now, there are items that you may decide, I can't survive without. So what do you do? You layer your survival items, meaning things that you cannot replace out in the wild needs to be on your person. Let me give you some examples, some things that I make sure that I don't have actually in the bag. This, oh, I've got it tied if I get it out. This is an item that I can't make out in the wild. I can't create it out in the wild that I feel I need. There. Why do I feel I need this? Because I can't see everywhere. You know, ticks, rashes, injuries, something bit me. I gotta see, looking like it's infected. I need a mirror. I can set this up, kind of walk back a little bit and try to look. I can't create this. And for health reasons, especially if you're gonna be in an area with ticks, this is a handy thing. And again, I can't create that and it's small. I can put that in my pocket. Put things around your neck. This is my, everything has gone so wrong. I mean, I have lost everything. And this is around my neck. Why? Because I have a knife on my belt. I'm not a bow drill kind of gal. I'm not, I'm not good at that. So I have a variety of ways to start fires in my system. 
if this goes around my neck as if, if, if all everything has gone wrong, everything that I never imagined happen could happen happened, right? At least I have that. Some people might decide to put a life straw around their neck. You might. Things like that. You could dig a hole next to your water source. You can. It's better than nothing, right? You can get by without this. But some people, depending upon again where you are, as a last resort, this is around your neck. Now, the other idea is, this is what I have, is I have a fanny pack. I can drop my pack, unclip something, which we'll talk about, grab it and go. Just poof, poof gone, done, right? This doesn't have to be around your waist, by the way. You can put it across here. And so you have pack in the front, like this. In here, you might want to put your Sawyer. More flexible, more versatile than a life straw. Have your little bag in there if you need it. However you want to do it. Minimally, have that, right? You got a water bottle on you, plastic bottle, or just these two things, and have them in your fanny pack. Any items that you feel that I really, really, really need to have with me need to be on your person, not in that little zipper part, you know, on the top of your pack, you know, the brain of your pack or in the front of your pack or wherever you put your little, little items. Uh-uh. And make sure that you have a plan on how to deal with, you don't have the big items. You don't have your tent. You don't have your tarp. You don't have a sleeping bag. You don't have a change of clothes. You don't have your food. What are you going to do? You have to drop your pack and go for whatever reason. People don't like talking about this, but this is the reality, though. All that gear is not going to do you any good if you have to leave it behind for whatever reason it is. You've got to swim across a river. You're in danger. There's a forest fire coming. What are you going to do? You're going to take the time to pull out your sleeping pad and blow it up and try to use it as a raft for your pack? <laughs> or are you going to drop it and you're going to go into the water and you're going to swim across and you're going to go? I guess it depends on how badly you want to survive, right? Versus you want your gear. You see? So when you're setting up your bag, you need to put items that are critical to your survival in a place that you could easily drop your pack, grab that item, and go. You don't have time to, to, to drop your pack, open it up, take everything out, and dig for things that you might need. No. So if it's you feel you need your coat or something, you need to have a clip to the outside of your pack. Drop your pack, unclip it, grab it, go. That's the reality of an actual bug out when things go sideways. That's how I see it. I think everything else is, is fantasy. I think what they portray in The Walking Dead, that one thing anyway, is very, very accurate. What do you think? So these are things to consider if you want to survive. And uh, thanks for watching. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention and talk about it. It's been a while. And again, keeping it real. This, this, you know, if things went really that wrong, SHTF, World Without Law, EMPs, major, major problems. It's not like in the movies. Remember, part of survival is having contingency plans for when things go wrong. And I don't think when it comes to the whole bug out scenarios, people really talk about that enough. But things do. And so be prepared. Thanks for watching.